Stan Jabalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One, Good Vibrations. Although you'll never hear me using those phonetics because I use CW and PSK pretty much exclusively at your service. With an, a little idea that I thought up last night. And there's absolutely no reason that I can imagine why this should not work. Let's start with a basic dipole antenna for the 3.5 megahertz amateur radio band. Simple 3.5 megahertz dipole with a ballon coil at the center, a ballon transformer at the center fed with coaxial cable that goes to your radio. That coaxial cable, by the way, uh, is available in two common impedances. The more common is 50 ohm or 52 ohm, sometimes it's called coaxial cable, which would in theory produce approximately a 1.5 to 1 SWR at the feed point with a straight dipole in free space like this measuring a half wavelength long. The other type of coaxial cable is the type you see with television systems. That's 75 ohm coax and that would theoretically provide a 1 to 1 SWR right here but when you by the time you get down to your radio it would be a mismatch of 1.5 to 1 but it would basically still work perfectly well and I think that that stuff is called RG59 and it's probably a better bet in many uh, instances than the RG58 because RG59 has inherently lower loss per unit length than RG58 does but let's this is just basically the scheme right here a dipole antenna fed in the center for 3.5 megahertz. That thing from end to end is going to measure just about exactly 132 feet. Now it depends on which part of the band you're in. Um, I, I would use the CW part of the band. At the phone part of the band it might be more like 125 feet or so but Suppose that you cut an antenna like this, you tune it for the minimum standing wave ratio at the frequency you want. Let's just suppose for, for argument's sake that that's 3.540 megahertz and the CW band, you've got everything going, except there's just one little problem. You can't make it straight. You can't quite fit it in your residential lot because your residential lot only measures like say 90 feet maybe 95 feet long. So you bend the ends of that antenna, but it uh, there isn't really any, suppose there just isn't really any convenient way to do that, or suppose, better yet, that you're forced to uh, put this dipole up in a so-called inverted V configuration, that is to say the elements slope down like this. Because you simply don't have the supports here, you have to tie them down pretty much to the ground. So, well, in a case like that, if you don't have quite enough room, there are a couple things you can do. There are several things you can do. One thing is you can switch to open wire feed and use a transmatch at your radio. So instead of coaxial cable here, you might use ladder line and a transmatch going to the radio. The Palstar transmatches are excellent transmatches that uh, they have one in particular that is designed specifically to tune balance line and now uh, every t every opportunity I get I recommend this company because I have one of their transmatches and it's it's pretty doggone good thing so that's the scene except there's just one glitch well that's one way to get rid of around that glitch another way is to load it with inductors somewhere <clears throat> along its length to shorten it, preferably roughly in the center. You might put a little inductor here, a little inductor here, and you can shorten the antenna that way. Uh, that's another way that you can do that, and, uh, and it has been done, and it's, uh, 
you have to do that by experiment but I just thought up another solution and I don't know whether it's really any better than any of the others or not uh, to me I, though I just think it's a totally cool solution for the moment we will v journey out to outer space and look at the moons of Saturn and then come back with a fresh tabula rasa blank slate on which I can scribble for you my idea. Suppose that instead of the inductive loading or the ladder line scenario, you decide to try something like this. Here's your dipole. But instead of 132 feet long, well, let me draw that all over again because it just doesn't look, doesn't look like I quite got it uh, equal lengths on each side. It's always a center-fed antenna. Suppose that you feed it with a certain length of ladder line here, and then you put your ballon here, and then from there you run the coax to your radio. And suppose that these links here, this side including one side of the feed line and this line including one side of the feed line, both combined in effect measure a quarter of a wavelength. So in effect then the entire length of the antenna going along like this is a half of a wavelength. That's going to turn out to be less than 132 feet. How much less? It depends upon how long you make this section of line. <clears throat> An interesting thing is going to happen to the feed point impedance at this ballon transformer if you do this. It's going to go down. Now I'm assuming that you keep the thing resonant as a half wavelength system. You figure out which length you need and you can actually calculate it if you use ladder line with a velocity factor of 90% or 0 0.90, if that's what you use here, you can calculate that length and then for this wire generally, your velocity factor would be 0.95 or 95%. You can calculate those lengths uh, and each side of the dipole, that is the right-hand side and the left-hand side, would measure 230, pardon me, 246 V divided by the frequency in megahertz. So you can work all of that out to get a very close idea of how much line you can use at this point right here to make the antenna however much shorter. And you can make, like I said, a little more, a little less line. You don't want to use too much. I mean, you don't want to shorten it all the way down until you end up back in outer space. No, seriously, you don't want to shorten the line down so far that you end up with something like two feet here and two feet here and however much here, you know, over a hundred feet of line to your ballon and then your coax to your radio. You don't want to do that because if you do that, you're going to get an impedance, a resistive impedance right here that's very, very low. In fact, you could go to the ultimate extreme and just have a quarter wavelength section of ladder line like this. This is the the extreme, the end point, the end point of all absurdities. It isn't going to radiate at all in theory because you've simply got a, a quarter wavelength section of line that's intended to prevent radiation from itself, a practically infinite impedance here. So you're going to get a practically zero impedance there. But I'm using all of this weird reasoning to infer the idea that you could find an optimum state of affairs here where you will get exactly 50 ohms pure resistance here. 
I don't know exactly what that length would be, but my guess would be something on the order of 20 to 30 feet of ladder line or window line, uh, open wire basically. And that would reduce your uh, antenna to a length of somewhere on the order of 100 feet. Those squiggles are approximately equal to. Then, because of this ballon coil to ensure balance, this little section of line won't radiate. Only the antenna will. But it will be shorter than a full-size dipole, and yet you aren't using inductors in it discrete lumped inductances because those can tend to be rather lossy you're using the best quality open wire line that you can possibly find and that is an important consideration here they do make ladder line uh, that's 450 ohms impedance but the actual impedance of this line is not really very important what's important is that it be a low loss line and that means it must have mostly air as its dielectric. So that is uh, what I might call a center-loaded dipole. A dipole antenna center-loaded with ladder line. Now, of course, you can go beyond 20 or 30 feet, maybe 40 or 50 feet. Then you're going to see a, uh, an impedance here that goes down and down and down. But even if it goes all the way down to 40 ohms or even 35 ohms, you're still going to have an entirely acceptable standing wave ratio. In fact, if you can keep the standing wave ratio under 2 to 1, for all intents and purposes, your feed line, your coaxial feed line, will behave every bit as efficiently in practice as it would with a perfect match. The loss caused by SWR would be less than one decibel and most radios will accept a standing wave ratio of up to two to one before they start to squeak and squawk at you that they don't like it in one way or another. Stan Gibalisco, W1GV Whiskey One Golf Victor Di da da di da 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 da